Thanks for tuning in to Within the Frame. I'm Handan in Seoul. The bromance between two old friends, Vladimir Putin of Russia and Xi Jinping of China, was on full display as Putin visited China in his first overseas trip. Since his re-election, celebrating the 75th anniversary of diplomatic relations forged between the former Soviet Union and China, the two leaders reaffirmed their no-limits partnership that has grown deeper as they face deepening tensions with the West. Slamming the U.S. and its Western allies for destabilizing security in the Asia-Pacific region, they urged them to stop military provocations against North Korea. For an expert analysis of the Putin Xi summit. And its regional implications. Lee Min Jung, associate professor of international studies at Gongju National University, joins us virtually. Welcome to the program. Hello. Good evening. For another perspective, Evans Revere, non-resident senior fellow at the Brookings Institution's foreign policy program, also joins us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to be with you. All right. Let's kick things off with you, Professor Lim. President Xi gave Putin a warm welcome, calling him an old friend, while Putin called Russia-China ties a stabilizing force in a chaotic world. What's your overall assessment of Putin's visit to China so far? Well, uh, first of all, of course, um, it is interesting, of course, uh, to see that uh, President Putin, ever since his the fifth uh, term um, started earlier this month, he chose China um, as his first foreign trip. Um, so uh, it indicates, um, of course, uh, many political meanings and even economic meanings too. Uh, through the joint statement, they already emphasize um, their father. Uh, military cooperation, but not only just militarily. Ever since, um, especially the war um, in Ukraine started, um, which of course started by the Russia's invasion to Ukraine uh, more than uh, two years ago from now. Uh, but ever since then, of course, the Western sanction has been strengthened further, and having had those kind of pretty tough um, sanctions against uh, Russia's economic ties uh, with China-like country, um, has been deep. And deepen. So, in in some Western, of course, among the some Western experts, um, uh, you know, some voices like this again, the Russia became a more kind of junior panel of the China. So, um, if you if you you know whether or not you agree with that specific again the description, again, it, those kind of discrimination description or explanation um, indicates that again the Russia is pretty much economically dependent now. On China, um, so they definitely do have um, common interest um, at this moment, and they are trying to again to blame, of course, um, the West, uh, represented by uh, the United States, as the one um, who caused all the situations. Of course, I personally don't agree with that kind of again idea, um, but um, certainly um, it looks like they uh, make an alliance. Um, which is more like an anti-West, anti-America. It's perhaps not so surprising. Putin has chosen China as his first foreign trip since his re-election, as he now needs China's help more than ever, as you pointed out.、Uh, and he certainly sees the opportunity to boast strong ties with China and their united front against the West. Dr. Revere, as widely expected, Putin and Xi criticized U.S. foreign policy at length, voicing concerns over the U.S. formed alliances such as the AUKUS, which they called a Cold War. War mentality. How do you see the U.S.-led grouping of like-minded nations and China and Russia's stronger unity against it? Well, at the outset, I think it's important to、uh, note that the statement by、uh, Putin and Xi was not just aimed at the United States.、Uh, they also made clear that a core goal of their so-called No Limits partnership. Is to replace the liberal democratic international order with one that's led by China and Russia. So the Xi Putin summit, I think, is an important wake-up call to the world about Chinese and Russian intentions.、Uh, the fact that Putin and Xi spent so many words attacking U.S.-led alliances and partnerships,、uh, and also attacking the efforts of the world's democracies、uh, to defend themselves and their values, I think that tells us something important. 
about how concerned the Chinese and Russian leaders are about the ability of these partnerships to push back against what Moscow and Beijing are doing. In Europe, the NATO alliance has mobilized to help defend Ukraine, and in doing so, it's sending a very powerful message to Russia that Russian aggression against a sovereign country will not stand. Meanwhile, in the Indo-Pacific region, uh, China's military buildup, its uh, bullying of its neighbors, the threatening posture it's taking towards Taiwan, its uh, support for North Korea, and its aggressive pursuit of territorial claims uh, in the region has sparked uh, an unprecedented mobilization of regional actors in the international community who are all concerned about what Beijing is doing. And the result, as you suggested, has been the establishment of the Quad and AUKUS, uh, greatly strengthened alliance ties between the United States and Korea, the United States and Japan, and of course, this unprecedented cooperation we're seeing among the United States, Japan, and Korea. Uh, we've seen now U.S.-Japan-Philippine military exercises and cooperation. Uh, new U.S. missile and mobile ground force deployments in the region, and much more. So the Europe region and the Indo-Pacific region are organizing themselves as never before to deal with the challenges posed by China and Russia and other partners. This is good news for liberal democracies. Uh, it's not good news for China, Russia, and North Korea. And Dr. Revere, some point out that President Xi toned down his level of criticism toward the U.S. and perhaps also to other like-minded nations that share democratic values uh, as he seeks to manage deepening tensions with Washington and other European countries as well uh, in hand, and enhance China's perceived legitimacy on the global stage. And when asked about this, State Department spokesman Vedant Patel said that China can't have its cake and eat it too. What's your take? Uh, to speak very frankly, there's a tremendous amount of hypocrisy in China's stated desire to seek improved relations with Europe uh, and to maintain its uh, position in Europe's markets on the one hand, while at the same time China is supporting uh, Russia's mm -hmm. war against a, a sovereign country, Ukraine. Meanwhile, China is standing by as Russia hints at expanding uh, the conflict with Ukraine to include tax attacks on NATO members and has even hinted at the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, Europe feels greatly threatened by Russia, and Europeans are deeply troubled by China's support for Russia. There's also, I think, tremendous hypocrisy in Beijing's criticism of U.S.-led alliances in, in Asia, particularly the U.S.-South Korea alliance, while the PRC remains a uh, devoted treaty ally of North Korea. Uh, and North Korea, of course, poses an existential threat to South Korea and also to Japan. And China is providing uh, substantial uh, material and political support for Pyongyang and is violating UN Security Council sanctions uh, as it aids North Korea. And Beijing is also looking the other way as Pyongyang expands its uh, nuclear and missile arsenals. And that is, of course, contributing to rising tensions on the Korean Peninsula and in the, in the area. Meanwhile, the Chinese profess to want a, to try to stabilize and improve relations with the United States uh, while all this is going on. So it's no surprise that the United States' response to all of this is a very blunt message to Beijing. You can't have it both ways. So uh, a great deal of hypocrisy on China's end. Uh, and it seems like while Putin boasts his close friendship with Xi, the Chinese leader, has his reasons to worry. And it appears Xi Jinping is mulling how far China should go to help an old friend. And Professor Lim, on the war in Ukraine, President Xi said <clears throat> that there should be a political solution to the war and that China will continue to play a constructive role, but offered no new proposals. How do you assess China's stance on the Russia's uh, war against Ukraine? Well, um, let me first mention about uh, the fundamental nature, conflictual nature uh, between uh, Russia and China. Of course, they, uh, in the era of Cold War, of course, they share the same ideology, which is again the communism. 
Um, they backed up each other um, even today, um, as, as long as, again, the, the Russia is confronting with the West and the United States. Of course, China probably cannot, cannot probably advocate um, the West voices, uh, which might be somewhat understandable, but at the same time, uh, but China and Russia, these two big, big, big giant, uh, giant size um, superpowers who have nuke, um, they can't be at the same team ultimately. I don't think so. So that is why even throughout the decades in the era of Cold War, so-called Sino, um, again, the Soviet rivalry competition or even conflict we have witnessed um, several times or many times. So for now, uh, for now, as long as war is going on, um, of course, they cannot but be the one team. Uh, however, um, at the same time, I do see um, some residuals or potentials for um, um, the, those kind of, um, again, the conflicts between the two as well. So let me just highlight that specific point first. And China's role, of course, you know, many, I think, in the world, including myself, Many people want the, uh, the end of war as soon as possible. So many innocent civilians are victimized uh, by this massive, massive, again, the war. Um, so definitely, uh, at some point, uh, the war should be ended, um, again, as, as soon as possible. Um, however, uh, China's role, of course, China uh, has a certain leverage, I think, vis-a-vis uh, -vis Russia for now, uh, because of the reasons I mentioned all Earlier. Um, they do have, again, the economic ties or many other those, you know, uh, political reasons. Uh, China can have certain leverages, um, again, the, on the uh, Russia, but I'm I'm a little doubtful um, about how much, again, the China can um, have the leverage uh, over the Ukraine as well. Um, so my point is uh, probably if China really wants to, um, wants to practice some constructive role um, to end this war, again, I, I personally do think China needs to talk with the United States as well. <clears throat> So China and Russia, they're on the same team now, but their friendship may not last forever, especially with the two uh, both being nuclear powers. But f at least for now, it looks like China is a major supplier to Russia that's fueling the war in Ukraine, which leads us to our next question. Dr. Revere, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, during his visit to Beijing at the end of last month, warned China that Washington will take action if China does not stop supplying critical items to Russia. Uh, but it remains unclear uh, as to whether China will listen. What are your thoughts and, and what further action is expected from the U.S.? Hmm. I think Secretary Blinken's message to President Xi last month was very clear and very forceful. And the message was, if you don't stop helping Russia's war against Ukraine and its attempt to undermine uh, European security, we, the United States, will act in response. I think Beijing understands exactly what that means. Uh, the United States has already taken steps uh, against a, a number of Chinese entities that have been providing Russia with uh, some critical technology and some dual use components that have uh, uh, been a factor in, in Russia's effort against Ukraine. I think Secretary Blinken in his conversation with Xi Jinping was suggesting that this was only the beginning of what the United States uh, would be prepared to do. So I think the focus going forward uh, on the part of the United States will be uh, the possibility of applying broader and more biting sanctions and export controls on Russia. Uh, and with luck, uh, that will get Beijing's attention. And a growing Russia-China military ties is another point of concern. The two countries have strengthened military cooperation during the war in Ukraine and also expanded their joint naval drills near Taiwan. Uh, Dr. Revere, how big of a threat is this to the U.S. and the world? Mm. Russia and China each uh, individually are acting against the interests of NATO, uh, the United States, Europe, numerous countries in Asia, and uh, several of America's key alliances. Uh, Russia and China have the ability to engage in even bigger mischief if they begin to pool their military and intelligence resources, for example. 
Uh, going back to where I started in this conversation, the implications of the Putin Xi summit were that this may well be what Russia and China have in mind. Uh, the two countries see themselves as being aligned in opposition to the current international order and are eager to replace it with one that they would lead. That is a major threat that the United States, its allies, and international partners need to take very seriously. And as I said at the outset, the just concluded summit uh, is indeed a wake up call for all of us. Professor Lim, Putin and Xi, while blaming everything on the U.S., urged the country to stop intimidating North Korea militarily and halt provocations against the North. Do you anticipate a closer alignment between China, Russia, and North Korea going forward? And how do you see the chances of President Putin making a surprise visit to Pyongyang after concluding his trip to China? Well, I cannot be that sure whether, again, the President Putin uh, can make a, another foreign visit um, to Pyongyang or to, to some part of the North Korea. Um, because, of course, you know, um, even among um, among American experts, there is a certain a, a concern um, that um, Iran, China, Russia, North Korea, these four countries are now uh, cooperating further and further, which is definitely undermining um, the stability, not only in the Middle East and in Europe, it, those kind of, again, the alignment among the countries can, of course, shake the uh, peace and stability in this region, too, or, or around the world. So certainly, which is worrisome uh, for South Korea-like country as well. Um, however, but at the same time, um, you know, as long as, um, you know, North Korea um, already just violated all this, you know, international um, rules and uh, they just, you know, withdrew themselves uh, from the existing the regime, uh, which is trying to prevent further uh, proliferation of nuclear weapons. And as long as, again, that they are the violator and as long as South Korea is still trying to follow all these rules, again, to comply, uh, comply the rules, again, I, I definitely do think, again, the, the rest of the world um, will just back up, again, the Korea, South Korea's, again, the voices. So having said that, probably China's position um, can be uh, pretty different from the th three countries, again, the Russia, Iran, and the North Korea. Again, China um, is a big country, giant size country. At the same time, it's a trading country, too. So as long as they need to trade with the rest of the world, uh, I don't think China can be fully satisfied with this kind of, again, the categorization. Um, so probably they might want to see um, how would you say, another President Putin's visit, which can um, dilute the effects or, or benefits of the bilateral summit between the President Putin and President Xi. So again, I, I'm not 100% sure uh, whether, um, again, the President Putin going to make another visit to uh, Pyongyang. But China and Russia did put the world on notice that they have North Korea's back and emboldened North Korea, uh, fired several short-range ballistic missiles just today, this afternoon, into the East Sea. Uh, while well, we're still waiting for confirmation on Putin's possible visit to Pyongyang, Dr. Lim, the South Korea-Japan-China summit is expected to be held here in Seoul at the end of this month. What should South Korea aim to gain from the summit amid deepening cooperation between China, Russia, and North Korea? Certainly, um, I do. Of course, the, we do have a many important agenda for regional peace and stability, or not only just regional peace and stability for the global um, um, purposes as well. <clears throat> but um, certainly, I, I want to emphasize um, again the importance of the goal, our common goal. We definitely want nuclear weapon free Korean Peninsula. You know, as long as North Korea is keeps threatening us or Japan or even the United States or any other countries with the nuclear weapons, 
Again, to South Korea, even though I'm not one of them who strongly advocates self-armament with the nuclear weapons, but um, again, more and more South Korean citizens, um, they really um, are worried about this imbalanced situations, and they uh, tend to show more supportive uh, attitude uh, for um, self against nuclear armament, which can be really game changer, um, which gonna be undermining again the existing NPT, existing again the global regime, which is trying to prevent further proliferation of nuclear weapons. So I don't want to see again India Pakistan like combination in this region. And I think uh, many of us uh, will agree with my that kind of again argument. So as long as again this is a real urgent immediate threat, again definitely Definitely, um, the trilateral meeting um, should uh, deal with this uh, common goal. Again, the China cannot be happy uh, with the two nuclear armed uh, Koreas in the in the region either. So um, definitely, again, we do have many other issues, climate change issues, or any other um, important issues. Uh, but I hope again, the North Korea's nuclear problem uh, should be uh, discussed seriously and honestly um, among the three party. Well, a great deal of attention uh, will be focused on the Korea-Japan-China Trilateral Summit as it will come at a critical time, uh, if materialized, that is, and uh, we'll be watching developments very closely. Thank you, Dr. Lim and Dr. Revere, for your analysis. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you for And that does it for this edition of Within the Frame. Thank you for watching, and have a great weekend.